In this video, I tell you about the murder of Gloria Pointer on her way to school. Then I take you to the crime scene. Welcome to True Crime Beyond. Breaking news, police have charged a man in a 30-year-old cold case. Gloria Pointer was just 14 years old when she was raped and murdered on her way to school. It's been 29 years since Gloria Pointer called West 114th Street home, since she played in the street with all her neighborhood pals. I was her childhood friend. George Beard and Gloria were both 14 when she died. She was fast on her feet and so much fun to be around. She was just a good, good girl. On February 28, 1970, a young Yvonne Pointer gave birth to a baby daughter in Cleveland, Ohio, and named her Gloria Yvette Pointer. Known for her cute smile, Gloria was adored and loved by her family as she lit up the room with her adorable personality. Besides being a responsible daughter, she was also a caring sister to her younger brother, with whom she grew up in a house on East 114th Street in Cleveland. Gloria was a student at Harry E. Davis Junior High School where she was a disciplined student who took school seriously and never took a day off. Her efforts were going to be rewarded on December 6, 1984 when she was to receive a perfect attendance award. Around 8 a.m. in the morning, Yvonne received a call from the school informing her that her daughter hadn't arrived at school. Struck by worry and concern, Yvonne filed a missing persons report and the authorities launched a search for the 14-year-old student, which ended when they found her partially clothed at the bottom of a fire escape stairwell at around 10.30 a.m. Upon further tests, it was discovered that the cause of death was multiple blunt trauma impacts to the victim's upper body and head. The authorities searched for evidence around this tragic crime scene and even interrogated Gloria's loved ones and locals to get more insight into the whereabouts of the victim before she ended up there. As a result, the investigators learned that she called one of her friends who lived on East 105th Street early in the morning to let her know that she would stop by her house before school. But when Gloria failed to show up by 7.30 a.m., the waiting friend left for school alone. Between 7 and 7.30 a.m. on December 6th, Several locals witnessed Gloria being followed by a man wearing a brown coat and a knit cap as she was walking on Orville Avenue towards her school. One of the witnesses even saw a strange man grab Gloria's arm, after which they disappeared near a house on Orville Avenue. Hours later, the 14-year-old's body was found. Unfortunately, due to the lack of evidence and technological advancement at the time, the case gradually went cold over the years with nobody to blame for the innocent girl's death. However, about three decades later in 2013, when the authorities noticed some new and significant developments in DNA, the case was reopened. Thanks to a piece of DNA evidence extracted from the victim's clothing, the investigators found the link which led them to an already convicted rapist, Hernandez Warren. Finally, on May 13, 2013, the police arrested Warren for the rape and murder of Gloria Pointer in 1984. At the time of the crime, he used to reside in the same neighborhood as Gloria. Prior to this charge, he had already spent a decade and a half behind bars for assault and rape during a 1985 burglary. After his arrest, Warren confessed to the crime and told the authorities that he was under the influence of drugs when he committed the gruesome act. He claimed that after sexually assaulting the 14-year-old Gloria, he was leaving the scene but noticed her following him out. According to Warren, he then pushed Gloria down the steps and beat her with a piece of iron. He stated, I killed her, but why and how, I don't know. In May 2014, just a few months before his trial, he pled guilty to one count of aggravated murder and one count of rape in order to avoid the death penalty. Eventually, as part of the plea deal, Warren was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 30 years. 
This case is one that is sad in the sense of where the crime took place within feet of the school that Gloria was to attend that morning. It's ironic in the sense that she was absent from school the very day that she was to accept an award for perfect attendance. And it's scary in the sense that Gloria was killed ultimately by someone she likely knew and was taken advantage of. A young girl with so much potential and so much promise taken too early in life. So as we drill down into the crime scene, the first thing we notice is that it takes place in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and so here's Cleveland right here to the downtown areas over here on this side and to the east of downtown Cleveland is they refer to it as East Cleveland. So the murder scene took place in this area of the city here. Um, and as you can see, um, if we take this away here. Gloria's house was over here. Um, this is actually where the murder took place. The murder scene here in this apartment complex here, this small little apartment complex. And on the back side of this, you can't really see it from the bird's eye, but. In the Dateline episode, they interviewed a guy named Lamar Thomas, and his house was right over here. He was the guy that was one of the witnesses of her being over in this area, and, and at the time, didn't think much of it. Um, she thought that th there was just uh, kind of a little friendly horseplay going on, and they were just... You know, the, the, the person that was in, ended up being the killer uh, was with her, um, didn't, I don't think he necessarily could identify him, but noticed that they were together. Um, but he lived right here. Um, this area right here is actually where the school was. At present time, there is this new construction of apartments right here. So I think it's uh, kind of affordable housing here. And so they've obviously raised the old um, junior high school and put up this uh, apartment complex. And you can even see remnants of the old track right here. And this is actually the front of the school. This would have been on the front side of the school where the buses would have dropped off. And in fact, in the episode, you see old footage of them uh, filming the entrance and you see kids getting off the bus. That would have been right over here. Over here, um, it's not marked, but this is where Gloria was trying to go to that morning to go to a friend's house in order to borrow some kind of a hair band or something like that that she was going to use, that she was going to wear uh, in order to go to school to receive the award. Um, and so this is kind of what we're looking at here, right? And I'll say this is the last thing that I'll point your attention to, and this is this is a question mark, Dean's House of Jazz. I read, uh, either read or, or, or saw a video where it talked about um, the guy, the murderer. Apparently, there was a place called Dean's House of Jazz that was close to where they lived. Obviously, that's no longer there, but this is presumably where it was, where it was located over here off Superior. Um, and what I read was that the murderer, Hernandez Warren, apparently his family owned this Dean's House of Jazz where he worked at and apparently had some kind of contact with uh, Gloria at some point in time, which you would have expected if this was this was this was a place where kids could come and, you know, buy candy or whatever. And is I guess it doubled for kind of like a club or whatever at night. Uh, and the only reason why I have this located here is because of my Google search. Uh, this is the only thing that came up as a potential location, but. So it's interesting kind of where um, this crime took place and kind of the landmarks of what's going on here. You, again, you don't get this so much in the episode, but it kind of gives you an idea of where everything is happening. You know, she gets, she leaves home here um, from her home early in the morning. Apparently she left home because early because she had, you know, she had to go all the way across uh, these neighborhoods to go over to her friend's house to get the... Uh, the hairband uh, for her school and so she was leaving a little bit early and the episode talks about um, you know miss uh, pointer 
says over and over again about not going through the alley don't go through the alley you know and she rebuked her really when she saw her traveling towards the alley and the cut through and this is really what the alley is the alley is this strip of of street uh between i, I believe this is 110th and i believe this is 112th right here this is definitely 114th where they lived on and so this connector right here is the alley that she talks about so uh, which would get her quicker to school number one and would get her obviously quicker over here to her friend's house otherwise the only other way that i could think she would go to school if her mother didn't want her to come through this alley is to really go around all the way around here and then come over here and get into the school or come down this area and get into the school but obviously she was not one to walk all the way around here just to come over in this area to her friend's house so obviously she wanted to cut through here and i'm not really even sure if this is where she encountered hernandez or not but um as we look into this alleyway it's i'll, I'll put it in air quotes because it's kind of not really a typical what you would think an alleyway but it is kind of like a one-way street if you will and obviously this is present day so it looks a lot nicer but in previous uh previous years especially in 1984 you know this probably could have looked a lot different and probably was something that was bothersome enough for miss pointer for her to not allow glory to walk through so let's draw down in here to the house where Gloria lived and um, and the landmark really here on this and how I found this was really these um, let me see it's actually right over here it's this house right over here with these red pillars and you'll see this actually in the episode when they film Miss Pointer coming out here and sitting on her deck you can see these um, you can see these red pillars So that's the landmark that says, you know, this is where Gloria lived. And actually, to this day, Miss uh, Miss Pointer lives there. And what's interesting about this, and when I looked at this house, there was something interesting about really the date of when they moved in. Perhaps um, when I looked on Zillow, and I'll show you that in a minute, it showed, you know, Zillow will show you like, you know, transaction dates and when it was last sold or in, in the entry on Zillow for this house, there's only one entry and it's 1984. September of 1984 and we know that to this day she she lives in this house which makes sense that there's only one transaction in the Zillow record again the Zillow record shows the transaction being September of 1984 the the murder of Gloria Pointer took place in December of 1984 which kind of implies that they were only in this neighborhood for about three months before that happens Perhaps they lived in another house in this neighborhood. That could be the case, and they just moved into this one. Uh, maybe they were in a, a, a house that was close by. I'm not sure. but So this is the entry on this house here where Gloria lived. And as you can see, the price history, the date of the last transaction was September 14, 1984. Again, three months, less than three months prior to the murder of Gloria Pointer. So, you know, were they real familiar with the neighborhood? Obviously, they had... They had pointed out or identified that alleyway as something to avoid. Um, so no, it's just I just thought it was interesting when I looked at this, uh, this entry in Zillow about this house. So as we drill out of here, we can kind of see the bird's eye view of what we're looking at here. Again, she comes through here, comes through this alley, makes her way down this way. And this is the front of the school here. Um, as you can see, as, as mentioned, you know, this school no longer exists. I believe it was torn down in t uh, 2012 and laid uh, kind of empty for a while until this was built. So we'll look at um, the front of the building from actually the uh, Google Maps Street View. So this is actually the front of the school building here, right here on Church Hill. Um, and in the, the Dateline episode, they show, they show footage of kids getting off the bus here. So this is kind of like looking down this, that view right there. Again, this school was 
taken down. I mean, this is July of 2014. It was uh, not being used um, going back to 2012. And uh, you can see in 2016, everything's boarded up. You even have this basketball goal out here. But by 2016, it was all boarded up. Um, obviously not used at all. And then by 2021, still boarded up. In 2022, we see it's been raised completely. And so this is kind of what we're looking at in terms of the, the school. And as we look over here into this area, this is kind of the area where that apartment complex, that small little apartment complex is at, is where Gloria was taken, abducted, raped and ultimately killed over here in this area and it's kind of interesting to see how close everything is you know it's uh you know it was over in here where she was killed right here on the back side of this and her school literally was right here so you know the the assumption is you know when she left her house which is over here on 114th walked through here her mom saw her somehow right in here walking towards this alley if you will said hey you know what well, i did not tell you not to go through there couldn't give her a ride because her her car was filled with newspapers from her, her newspaper route and so i guess she just allowed her to go ahead and, and walk through this this alleyway if you will um, on her way to school made her way all the way down here somehow along the way she ran into Hernandez Warren because there was some witness of a a teacher or somebody saw her walking towards the school and so presumably it would have been over here through this alley down this street which is Orville Avenue so apparently you know somewhere along this line again she would have come in contact with Hernandez Warren because on her way here Lamar Thomas sees her with him over in this area. At the time, there was a house here. Um, it's no longer there. And if we look at some of the Street View stuff on, on Google, we can see that. But she's had this encounter with Hernandez. They make it over here. And, you know, this is the place where she is raped and killed, right next door to the, to the school where she was ultimately going to be at. So, again, here's the apartment where she was killed. The murder scene again here is the school where she was right next to this is where she would have walked down some point in time down this street she would have made an encounter with Hernandez Warren this is the house uh, Lamar Thomas's house and you can recognize that actually in the episode uh, when you see him being interviewed and he's like sitting outside of his house it's this yellow house here So probably a more recent view c21 here and as you can see over here you know even in 21 the the school still not not gone it's still there but you can see in 2014 2009 there's that house right that house would have existed back in the time of 84 during the murder um and even back to 07 that's the earliest we got but this is actually again this is the crime scene over here it would have taken place right back in there I'm trying to get a better view of it without the, uh, the trees there uh, maybe this is the best view um, yeah you can see it right there right and you see that in the episode and it would have been right back in here where she would have been taken Um, I think there may have been some buildings over here during the time of 84. I was looking at some satellite images and it looks like there's some buildings here. And there, again, there's the house. Here's Lamar's house. He would have seen him, I guess, maybe cutting through here, I guess, at some point in time. You know, he was, 
maybe coming to school and that maybe there was a cut through here to go back to the front of the school or maybe there was an, a back entrance to the school if there was a only a front end the front entrance access then he probably would have cut through here somehow maybe have seen them over here is when he noticed them over here and he said that he didn't think it was anything suspicious because he wasn't you know scared of him or wasn't trying to push him away or anything like that and so he he proceeds on to school this is kind of it i mean it's really you see how close everything is in proximity again the uh the house where she grew up at where she started was over here again this was the uh dean's house of jazz presumably uh where hernandez warren's family owned an establishment where he may have come in contact with gloria um and again here's the the cut through and we'll take a, a quick look at this cut through in this quote-unquote alley um, that was dangerous enough for uh, Miss Pointer to not allow her daughter to go through. So we'll take a look at that. So this is it, right? This is, you can see it's kind of an alley in the sense that it's not a two-way street. And if we look at some old dates here, we can go as far back as 20, uh, 2007. And you can see it's kind of grainy, kind of, but it's, it's a one-way street coming this way. But this is it, you know, coming through here and, you know, coming this way, there's, it only goes back to 2019, but if we come here, it opens up and it gives us some more dates going back as far as 2007 again, right? And so, you know, it still doesn't look bad, but, you know, again, this is 2007. Crime took place in 1984, and I'll show you some satellite images of this just to kind of give you an idea of what would have been over here on these, uh, on the side of this alleyway, if you will. And you can kind of see this is kind of a little bit, even in 2019, uh, maybe a little sketchy coming through here. You know, if anything happens here, who, who are the eyewitnesses? You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, some, some opportunity to be taken advantage of going through here. So if we look at the historical maps here, um, this is the area here. Um, there's Oroville right here. There's where the school would have been. Uh, here's 114th Street where where Gloria Pointer would have lived. Here again is the route she would have taken. Here's the cut through, if you will. And I'm going to look at some, some old aerials here. Let's go let's see as far back as we can go, 1982. It's going to be hard to see, but kind of get maybe get an image of what was over, the, what, what kind of, yeah, so there's still some houses down here, right? And um, we can do some overlays here with some roads. Right, so there's Orville right there, and you can see there's some stuff here, right? Um, let's go, let's go this way. Let's go 82. Let's let's see. Um, let's give it a little bit more time here. So yeah, so you know, even in 2002, there's this empty lot here. You know, not a whole lot's going on. That's so much different from today's view if we look at it on the Google Street View. Um, but you know, again, I think right in here is where the, where the sketchy part comes into play. And maybe that's something that caused Miss Pointer to kind of balk at having Gloria walk through here on the way to school. Maybe a quick review of what's going on here again. Gloria is here. Her house is here. She leaves her house, comes this way. Her mother sees her coming towards the alleyway, the cut through. Um, she kind of rebukes her and tells her not to do that, but she goes ahead and allows her to do that because she's on her way to her paper route and her car is too packed with papers to actually pick her up and take her to school so she walks through here through the cut through through the alley on her way to school actually on her way to past the school to go to her friend's house over here to pick up the hairband and somewhere along the way from here to here she encounters hernandez warren there's the eyewitness of the the teacher that says she sees her with some guy and then there's the eyewitness over here of Lamar Thomas seeing Gloria with another man another individual another male over in this area as he is presumably cutting through here to come to the front of the school to go in and again just to kind of give you an idea how close the murder scene was to her school it's right here you know and uh, so it's just a tragic story about a young girl who had her life snuffed out in such a horrendous and such a brutal and heartbreaking way. Um, certainly, uh, Miss Pointer 
Yvette Pointer, we, we mourn with her, we mourn with the family um, and all those involved. A lot of her friends are lived around here and still there to this day. And, uh, you know, they have to see the reminder of this apartment complex that's still existing to this day, actually. Um, and so, yeah, that's just a reminder. Even the school has gone away, but this apartment with, where the murder took place is still there. And uh, so just a reminder of the brutality of Hernandez Warren.